Well, my mistake because I was supposed to, I think, uh, deliver this talk yesterday, but uh, unfortunately, I had to deliver an oration in Ahmedabad, and so there was a lot of time issue. Uh, speaking regarding National Medical Commission is a sensitive topic, and uh, I have been given the responsibility, so I will try to do. Uh, justice to it, the topic given was what are the myths and what are the realities uh, of National Medical Commission Act. Now this doesn't seem to be working. Reforming and revamping the MCI took root in the Independence Day speech of Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. It was not a BJP thought. This had started in the time of Mr. Manmohan Singh. In 2013, this bill was first uh, put forward to the Parliamentary Committee, Standing Committee, and the Parliament Standing Committee rejected this bill and said, mainly for the three reasons. One was that it was against the federal structure of the constitution. The autonomy of the state and potential violation of federal principles, they said was a major objection to this particular act. Excessive bureaucratization and centralization would happen with this bill was another observation of the parliamentary standing committee. And faulty selection procedure of regulators providing scope for abuse was another reason they said that this act is not uh, proper to be brought in. Then in 2016, a high-powered committee under the chairmanship of Niti Ayo was formed in 2016 and it gave its report saying that the current electoral process of regulators, of appointing regulators is inherently saddled with compromises and attracts professionals who may not be best suited for the task at hand. This was a very, very bold and provocative statement which came. The preamble of NMC bill states that this principle of regulated electing the regulator is flawed and creates a conflict of interest, therefore MCI should be dissolved or discarded. Very interesting to hear this, these kind of words in a democracy where the people who are governed elect the people who govern them. This is the basic principle of democracy. And for NMC and MCI, they said just because doctors themselves are electing those who are to regulate them, this is a conflict of interest and hence MCI should be dissolved and NMC should be brought in. We should have had much more protest uh, against this because uh, I show you that we have lost the character that a profession by definition should have. What are we now, whether we are traders, whether we are an occupation, I do not know, but very, very serious and deep-rooted implications are there. In May 2016, the Tribune published this report that 80 member parliaments own or have substantial interest in private medical colleges. Either they own them or they have substantial interest in them. But not one member in the parliament, in Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha, abstained from voting on this bill, which is to financially reward the owners of private medical colleges, citing conflict of interest. Was this not cited for conflict of interest? Could they not have recused themselves from voting? Not one member parliament recused from voting on this issue which had so substantial and glaring a conflict of interest that you are owning private medical colleges and you are uh, voting to pass a bill 
which is going to change the structure of the regulator which decides whether you can or you cannot run uh, medical training programs. And these politicians for the past three decades have used and misused MCI to start medical colleges, get courses approved and now the NMC bill and the NMC act actually packs this regulator with nominees of the same politicians. So they own private medical colleges and they decide who is going to regulate them. The people are not even elected, they are nominated by these same politicians. Under RTI, Medical Legal Action Group, which I uh, represent, we have asked this question to Parliamentary Affair, Ministry of Parliamentary Affairs, to Election Commission of India, to PMO, as to how many member parliaments currently own or have substantial stakeholding or are manage, in managing committees or are trustees of private medical colleges. We have not got a single answer, a single reply from any source. It is all confounded in legal jargon and nobody gives a clear cut reply that out of these many member parliaments, these many either own or are in the managing committee or have a substantial stake in the management of private medical colleges. Why I am bothered? I am bothered because this has now fundamentally changed my profession from being called a profession to either it should be called a trade or it should be called an occupation. I mean a carpenter is not a professional, he, he, it's an occupation. He doesn't need a regulator of the kind of press council of India or uh, bar council of India. It's an occupation, he simply does his work. This is what we have been reduced to, if not to traders, because we are definitely not professionals. What is the definition of professional? One, we should be educated, of course, a carpenter can also be educated. We should receive higher education, all right. We should be accountable, but this accountability has to have an internal mechanism by the profession. Press Council of India, when I make a complaint against Times of India, this was in 2005, the first reply I get is please file an affidavit stating very clearly that you have not complained in this regard anywhere else. If a complaint is made against me to Punjab Medical Council, they will gladly with open arms accept the complaint even though the complainant may have filed the same complaint against me in 10 other fora. So this self-regulation part is missing now. This accountability which should have been uh, internal is missing. And there is no autonomy. Professional, professions by definition have to be autonomous. If you are going to tell me Ki Dr. Nagpal, you are going to operate with your left hand you are going to be tied by your feet to the roof and this is how you will do the surgery, then it is no longer a profession I am doing. I am doing what my master is commanding. If my regulator is also not from within us, we are not electing our regulators now under NMC. And it is the central government which is supreme in all matters. I will show you the, you can go in appeal from State Medical Council to National Medical Council, from State Medical Council to Ethics and Medical Regulatory Board, from uh, the uh, Undergraduate uh, Board, maybe you will go to NMC. But if you are dissatisfied with NMC, you can file a complaint or an appeal to Central Government now. If Central Government is supreme, why did we bother with naming this as a National Medical Commission Act? We should simply have said, we are opening another department of Ministry and Health and Family Welfare. What the Prime Minister Honorable will say will be done by the Minister of Health. What the Ministry of Health will say will be done by the National Medical Commission, which is the Department of Ministry of Health. It is not an autonomous body. Let us not be fool ourselves. When this is 
the definition of profession which is given by Jackson and Powell mentions very clearly that professional association which regulates admission and seeks to uphold the standards of the profession. Here we have people who are nominated by the government who are doing the job for us. Maybe doctors, but they are nominated. We have already been made into a trade by Consumer Protection Act. No self-regulation, hence this is not a profession under National Medical Commission Act. Multiple judicial, quasi-judicial fora to hold doctors accountable. No self-regulation. Supposing, while the Britishers in 1947 were leaving India, they had told us, Ki, all right, we will give you independence. Aapko swaraj chahiye, hum swaraj dete. हम 500 इंडियंस को नॉमिनेट करते हैं आपको गवर्न करने के लिए। Would that be democracy? Would that be स्वराज? Would that have been independence? If we were not having the power to elect our representatives to the government and it was the Britishers who had nominated 500 इंडियंस to parliament to rule us. Could this have been considered Swaraj or could this have been considered uh, independence? If not, then how is this where the entire body of National Medical Commission is nominated for, by post? Elected representatives in National Medical Council are just not there. There is overwhelming central government control. When 75% of the healthcare is provided by small and medium healthcare establishments, and there is no effective re representation given to this. So, the myth is that National Medical Commission is representative. Fact is, it is not. Only nine part time members are also nominated from among the elected state medical council members. There are 10 state medical council members in Punjab Medical Council. From these, one will be nominated to represent in the National Medical Commission and that to total nine. So you imagine how many state medical councils are there? If there are 30 or 35 uh, people from state medical councils or UT's medical councils who are elected uh, uh, and nominated, at one time, only nine will be representing the states in the National Medical Commission. So if Punjab has to be represented, represented next time by an elected representative, the turn will come four years later. What kind of representation and self-regulation is this? I mean, this is all in the act, so I don't need to stress on this. Earlier in NCI, every state had three representatives. There were 120 odd members. Yes, there were problems in NCI, I don't deny it. But we could have changed the structure, changed the character, amended the act, and improved the working rather than abolishing NCI and bringing up something which is now totally working like a department of ministry and health and family welfare. It is not a self-regulated autonomous body. And if it is not a self-regulated autonomous body, all 13 lakh doctors working in India are not professionals by definition. There are a number of issues which come with this, but since I have to speak only on what are the myths and realities, I will uh, uh, restrict myself to that. Look at the other professional bodies. Bar Council, Institute of Chartered Accountants, Institute of Cost. Do you know how Institute of Chartered Accountants uh, regulates or decides who can become a chartered accountant? It is all entirely in the hands of Institute of Chartered Accountants. There is no private institutes of uh, chartered accountancy. The organization itself controls who will be taken in, who will be passed. Institute of Company Secretaries of India, Council of Architecture, Press Council of India, 
let them try and nominate people into the bar council or the press council to this extent or to even one tenth of the extent they have done in national medical commission not possible because it is because we are not doctors we are not professionals we are sheep who will do exactly what we are told and we will all move in different directions hence we cannot change the course of what is being told to us then the issue of federalism and authoritarianism look at the wordings section 10 commission national medical commission shall perform following functions one of which is take such measures as may be necessary to ensure compliance by state medical council mci could decide one thing could never make west bengal medical council do what it uh, had ordered there was a resemblance of federal structure health is a state subject medical education is creating a problem because this is duality in in control so now the issue of federalism is gone under national medical commission act whatever national medical commission has said state medical commission has to follow it is bound to follow where state act confers power upon state medical council to take disciplinary action against registered medical practitioner the state medical council shall act in accordance with regulations made by the national medical commission act it is not by punjab medical council amendment act 2010 they have to follow what is given in the national medical commission act provided that till such time state medical council is established in a state the emrb shall receive complaints and grievances so the entire thing is centralized again the question of autonomy versus what is the fact is that the central government is supreme the commission national medical commission does not have final say to recognize medical institutions do you know that it is not the national medical commission which will decide whether the anand medical college tomorrow should be continued to be given recognition if they say no the anand medical college can appeal to the central government and it is the central government which will decide where is the autonomy where is the self regulation don't be fool us say very clearly you are carpenters you will do exactly what we tell you don't make us professionals this this is a myth एक तरफ से बात हम करते हैं नोबल प्रोफेशन और ये प्रोफेशन ही नहीं है तो नोबिलिटी की बात कहां से आती अगेन ऑटोनॉमी सेल्फ रेगुलेशन पावर्स ऑफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट डिसीजन ऑफ सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट वेदर इट इज अ क्वेश्चन ऑफ पॉलिसी और नॉट शैल बी फाइनल एंड Commission autonomous boards shall, in exercise of their powers, discharge their functions under this Act. Be bound by such directions as are given by the central government. Try doing that with the bar council. Try doing that with the press council. Cannot afford to. The nation will come to a standstill. But we are doctors. We are sheep. We will simply say, "Ba, ठीक है, मालिक जो कहा." we are forced now to have joint sittings with homeopathic council indian council central council of indian medicine representatives and joint decisions taken will be implemented in national medical commission look at the wordings in section 55 the commission shall persistently made uh, the, if the commission has uh, persistently made default in complying with any direction issued by the central government any direction issued by the central government the central government may by notification supersede the commission the commission can be dissolved the commission can be set in abeyance why are we talking of autonomy and self regulation don't be fooled this is a myth the cabinet secretary and secretary health may be good administrators in their own right but they cannot be expected 
to understand the requirements of the profession. What is being attempted through National Medical Commission Bill is somewhat like asking the IAS officers to leave the Indian Army. Or as I gave the example, supposing the Britishers in 1947 had said, okay, I am nominating these 500 Indians, they will rule you from now onwards. How would that have become Swaraj or how would that have become independence? Bureaucrats, whether medical or non-medical, remain in their ivory towers in total disconnect with the ground realities and in the field of healthcare, their desire to control medical education as well as practice of medicine through the NMC Act is going to be disastrous for this country. Then was the issue that NCI is corrupt and the NMC bill we are bringing to it is to be able to be able to be able to be able after an MC bill comes, there will be no corruption. There were 120 odd members in MCI. One person can be corrupt. If we are going to dissolve the MCI because one person is corrupt, let us start with dissolving the parliament because one person has been convicted as corrupt. Do we do that? Here we have dissolved the entire autonomous body and we have brought in an act where we are picking and choosing who is going to sit there to decide on whether I can run my institution or not. And I am the one who is owning that institution. Absolute power and absolute discretion has been given. And this is the news report of NMC. So if there is corruption now in NMC, what should be done? We should uh, dissolve this also. NMC Act was meant to promote affordable medical education. This is what was sold to us. It will give good medical education and affordable medical education. The fee control of private medical colleges under this Act comes here. They are to frame the guidelines to determine the fees in respect to 50%. Law made by the same member parliaments who own these private medical colleges. And the commission which will decide is nominated by the same member parliaments. It will get, the private medical education will get a boost under NMC. Medical education will become costly, selection compromised due to exorbitant costs. We know what has happened recently for postgraduate NEET exam. Zero percentile. You know, with negative marking, what is the zero percentile? A person who does not attempt a single question will get zero marks. He will not be zero percentile. And zero marks, his rank may be at least uh, tenth or twelfth percentile. It will not be zero percentile, even at zero marks. Negative marking means a person who has minus 40 or minus 30 will be probably somewhere near zero percentile. And then we talk about NMC bringing, bringing quality into medical education. Great. Medical education is up for sale. Our politicians have realized that medical education can be sold. It is a cash cow. And the whole idea is how to fill empty private medical colleges seats. The entire focus is on this. I can go on giving you the history. There was a time when only non-profit trusts and societies could run medical colleges. After that, firms under Companies Act were permitted. Then the government allowed companies run medical colleges to make a profit out of medical education. After that, the existing non-profit trusts who were not supposedly making profit were permitted to make profit. So this thing, this thing has just evolved from a, a, not, a trust which was not intended to make profit to a shop which is selling degrees, nothing else. You know something, if tomorrow Dr. Ashwini wants to start a medical college, you think he needs a hospital, you need, he, need, he needs uh, to, to, to have a faculty uh, of, of let's say 100 or the area of land, maybe 10 acres? No. 
What does he need? To get a medical college approved, you need to give an undertaking that facilities will be provided later as planned. You should not have facilities on ground. You just need to give an undertaking that you will provide the facilities. If you think I'm wrong in stating that, section 29. Adequacy of financial resources. Facilities have been provided to ensure proper functioning of the college or would be provided later. Whether adequate hospital facilities have been provided or would be provided later within a time limit specified. So if I promise I will provide the facilities, I can be granted permission to start a shop where I can sell medical certificates and degrees. The myth is that this is an act to provide medical education system that improves access to quality medical education. We have already talked about of the need PG cutoff percentage, percentile. And section 29D says if NMC finds that the institution which is asking for permission does not fulfill the criteria, then subject to previous approval of central government, not National Medical Commission, the criteria may be relaxed further. All you had to do was give an undertaking, I will provide the facilities. And this also can be relaxed by the central government and then we say this is going to end corruption. If this is not all a myth, what is it? Such discretionary waivers is, is bound to create corruption and if somebody tells me otherwise, I refuse to believe that. Meant to promote quality medical education. Section 51, what they have done is, initially if you remember there was something called bridge courses for Irish doctors to become uh, modern scientific medicine doctors. Yes, it was kept in abeyance, but section 51 says that every state government may for the purpose of addressing or promoting primary health care in rural area take necessary measures to enhance the capacity of healthcare professionals. The bridge course can be started by the state governments. Med state Medical Council will be formed within three years. This was mentioned in the NMC Act. We just checked under Medical, Medical Legal Action Group. There were, I think, four or five states and uh, uh, around the same number of union territories, but still, Chandigarh doesn't have a state medical council. So, the, the, perp, the what is said and what is actually on the ground is way different. Powers of medical council are limited to suspension of registration. This is what we understood. I give talks on Consumer Protection Act. I, I, I have had debates with high court judges, Supreme Court judges, senior advocates on this issue in panel discussions. And the argument I was always given was, Yes, State Medical Council should be deciding cases of medical negligence against doctors, but State Medical Councils do not compensate the victims with monetary uh, awards. Here, in Section 30, what does this say? Uh, Given opportunity of hearing to the medical practitioner concerned before taking any action, including imposition of any monetary award. So monetary award now can be awarded to a patient party or a complainant by the State Medical Council, Ethics and Medical Registration Board, NMC or whichever. So this is definitely, the myth is it is supposed to end quackery. But the fact is this in, introduces community health providers. And community health providers are not MBBS doctors. And they are very, very generous in saying we will permit only 3.5 lakh community health providers. Do you have any data on how many non MBBS are practicing, practicing modern scientific medicine in India? If we have 13 lakh MBBS doctors, non MBBS persons practicing modern scientific medicine in India crosses 50 lakhs. 
Do we ever take any action against them? Any state medical council, national medical council? No. It is politically sensitive agenda. Then it gives certain privileges to those registered with it. What are the privileges, my lord? I am an MBBS, I am an MD, I have done my senior residencies, I have done my trainings in various... What is this uh, extraordinary privilege that I have for being registered with you? That I can charge for my service. Thank you so very much. This is the only right I have. I do not have a right to safe working environment. I do not have any other right. The only thing is I have is duties, duties, duties. How can there be only responsibilities and duties with no rights? Dande ke saath gajar chahiye. You need a carrot and a stick. You can't have only stick and no carrot. And then if you read the Indian Medicine Central Council Act, exactly the same wordings given in the National Medical Commission Act are replicated in the Central Council of Indian Medicine Act. They can also issue certificates, they can also give evidence in court. The same privileges you are having is what they are having for being registered in their own act. Weird things have come to notice since the coming of National Medical Commission, but then that is expected because there is no representation, it is all nomination and what the master says, the servant has to uh, abide by. Usage of khadi products in men, I, I, I mean, I, I would love to wear khadi, just, just make me some chairman of some corporation somewhere, introduction of yoga in MBBS. How are we ensuring quality of medical education by bringing in things like this. This is political agendas. Professional bodies should have resisted this. But how can a professional body resist this when the professional body has been totally nominated? Achha, tune mere liye BJP mein kiya tha, pe election mein chal, aja tu ban ja. If it is going to be nominations, how do we expect anything? 75% of healthcare are repeatedly says by small and medium healthcare establishments and they have no representation in the regulatory body. How will you understand what are the problems? How will you find solutions to the problems? This act has, is going to destroy a system of medical education which had provided quality and products. Over the years, U.S. Mein studies hui hai, Indian doctors provide better results than even their indigenous doctors. How were the Indian doctors produced? By the same medical education system, which you are wanting to destroy like a bull in a china shop. There is no other word I have for it. What we are doing today is we are producing increasing number of unemployable specialists and super specialists. You have an MS degree, you can't do a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. What is that MS degree for? An MS ophthalmology cannot perform a phaco cataract surgery. Why have we given that MS, MS degree? We have simply sold it. So let us say we are selling degrees. Why do we say you have to come and learn? आप ऑक्शन शुरू करो ऑनलाइन हम वहीं पे दे देंगे आपको फीस भी मिल जाएगी बंदा भी खुश है। Well, I tried getting into National Medical Commission uh, and I made an application recently they had advertised. So I was asked this question कि kindly the papers are incomplete you send me the vigilance inquiry report your annual uh, ACR your NOC from your uh, boss. So I had to ask them, okay, sir, where is the law which says a private medical practitioner cannot come into National Medical Council? I would love to see that. You show me that so that I can challenge it. 
If I am a private practitioner, I have been a private practitioner for 30 years, where does the vigilance, vigilance inquiry come into the picture? The only way to get into National Medical Commission is if you get elected into State Medical Council and then somebody in the government in the state decides to nominate you to National Medical Commission, that also will be once in four years. Thank you so very much.